This is Jay Martin. Why silver? Well, silver historically has outperformed gold. It usually lags and then outperforms. So I think this is the time to be going overweight on silver. I obviously want to talk about Dolly Barton yes. and give you the opportunity to tell prospective investors why it's a buy right now. One of the largest players in the silver sector just affirmed that they think it's a buy. Very important that we are walking away net net with $10 million. Yeah. And um, we've put a floor in the next financing. We're That's not right. going to raise money below 65 cents. So we're showing our shareholders a commitment to limiting dilution. Welcome to the Jay Martin Show. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jay. I'm an investor looking for the smartest home for my cash. If that sounds like you, then I think you're going to like what we do here. My guest today is Sean Kuhn Kuhn, the president and CEO of Dolly Varden Silver, a silver development company located in British Columbia, Canada. Now, if you like following the smartest money in the business, then I think you're going to like Dolly Varden Silver because you'll be following in investors like Eric Sprott, Rick Rule, and some of the biggest silver producers in the world, including Hecla Mining, who recently increased their position in Dolly Varden Silver from 10 to 15% with a $10 million bet. Here's Sean Kuhn Kuhn. Enjoy. Sean. Jay. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah, me. Have a seat. Thanks. Okay, I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. Yeah, me too. I want to get uh, caught up on the silver market, get your perspective on what's catching your eye. Okay. I obviously want to talk about Dolly Varden. Yes. And give you the opportunity to tell prospective investors why it's a buy right now. Yeah. Um, one of the largest players in the silver sector just affirmed that they think it's a buy to the tune of $10 million. So we're going to talk about that as well. But right now, let's start with just silver equities. Why are silver equities a buy right now? Do you think they are? And if so, why? I do. I think, listen, I think precious metals equities are a buy right now. I think particularly silver equities, uh, you know, silver lags gold. So I think their silver equities are even there's even more of a discount than to gold equities. And I, but I think historically, based on where the price of gold and the price of silver is, the equities have never been cheaper. So how do you make sense of a market like today when every fundamental, macro fundamental, is pointing towards what should be a gold rally and yeah. subsequently, you know, the slingshot silver rally? Yeah. But the metals have been pretty sleepy. You know, gold's catching a bid, but it's sort of uncertain whether that's got legs or not. Well, listen, I think we've had all these competing assets, right? So if we've had the longest bull market in history, mm. right? We've never had, bull markets usually run five, seven years max. Like well, this one's been running for 12 years. We've had a 12 year bull market and um, you've been able to make money everywhere. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, fine watches or antique cars or, you know, sure. housing, tech stocks. So in an environment where you've got an everything rally, mm. you've got, you know, Bitcoin's going from pennies to $60,000 a, uh, a coin, um, why gold, right? Now, I look at it a little bit differently in that, you know, in this era of insanity, where you've got, because whether it's money printing, devaluation of currencies, and you've got this everything bubble, what, where do I feel like there's value? Mm. And I think gold um, has done very well in that environment. And if you focus on other currencies outside of the US dollar, it's done extremely well. But even in dollar terms, it's doing, you know, it's flirting with all time highs. Uh, but I think that um, sanity will return to markets. It always does. And when it does, um, I think gold catches a massive bid. Mm. And why silver? Well, silver historically has outperformed gold. It usually lags and then outperforms. So I think this is the time to be going overweight on silver. And what, in your perspective, from your experience, what causes that shift in investor mindset to go risk on with junior precious metals equities? Because, you know, gold may catch a bid first because it's mm -hmm. a safe haven which is kind of the antithesis of risk, right? You go there for safety. Yeah. But eventually that price gets to a point that starts fueling greed and then people want the torque that they can get with the equities. So, you know, is there a, is there a trigger point that you look for? Have you seen in the past or what's, what's on your radar on that front? Well, look, I think if you focus on like gold is one of the most liquid assets on the planet, is one of the most recognized globally. So most investors will never come down and buy a gold equity, right? right. We're just looking for a very, very, very small minority of some select institutional investors and some retail investors to find this space. 
So for me, it's just a function of you'll get to a place where um, <clears throat> people will be looking for more torque, that the idea of gold maintaining its purchasing power doesn't apply or appeal to all investors. You know, those investors yeah. who are looking for more will be looking for that uh, that torque and they'll and that's what will bring them to the large senior golds and then you know as you know you expand that risk profile mm. down to more speculative investments exploration companies and so on yeah which is coming i mean inevitably right retail investors specifically they want returns and they want returns in the near term generally speaking and that's what you find in the precious metals equities when that market turns on. But it's also like, you know, like we're not just talking about some concept like like in terms of Bitcoin, which is still kind of an unproven idea that mm. hasn't really, uh, you know, taken on a, a use case for everybody. Whereas there is gold that gets acquired and has been being acquired for years and years and years. And in the case of silver, there's a real industrial demand for this stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, there are buyers. And in the case of silver, you know, we've got a quarter of a billion ounce deficit right now. And it had one last year, we've got another one this year. And so where are we, you know, this is a real problem that the industry is facing. And we can't just go to a primary silver mine and say ramp up production because only 20% of the world silver comes from primary mines. Right. So it's, it is right. a, a big challenge. And that's why, uh, you know, after 20 years of being around all these commodities, you know, and primarily gold, I've made a decision um, to focus my efforts on silver because I think that the setup for silver has never been like this. Um, you know, we've, the, 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 the deficit is so large and and I don't see us getting to a point where we we bring that down. Right. Now I ask that question about you know when may the equities turn that corner because I get asked that question all the time by my subscribers and and viewers and I, I typically throw my hands up, Sean, and I'm like I don't know. Let me be the first newsletter writer to tell you I have no idea when the market's going to turn, mm -hmm. but I can determine when something's cheap. And my job as an investor is to buy things when they're cheap and sell them when they're expensive. And the smart money in the business makes bets when everyone's running away, when the market's quiet, when prices are depressed. Your, sh your shareholder base counts a lot of names that are super familiar to my audience, not, I mean, Fidelity being one, but um, Rick Rule, Eric Sprott, you know, in the Dolly Varden shareholder base. So maybe for somebody who's got eyes on this story for the first time, can you give us the headline, Dolly Varden Silver, what are you guys doing? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so what are we doing? Um, I think what makes us special is where we're doing it. So we're doing it in BC. So again, going back to that, you know, where do you get silver? You get them from, you know, where are these primary silver mines located? They're located in Argentina, in Chile, in Mexico. And we can talk about all the reasons it's becoming more and more increasingly difficult to get silver out of those locations. Um, but so we are, I think what makes us so attractive is that we're in Canada. And the other factor here is you've got a shareholder in Hecla that is the fastest growing established silver producer on the planet. Mm -hmm. And they're recognized, they're performing well. And I think it's because they're focused in the US as the US's largest primary silver producer, soon to be Canada's. And the Dolly Varden project fits well into that narrative. You know, and Hecla is a, it was a 10% shareholder this morning. We've now come out with an announcement, a timely interview, where they've, uh, they're putting another $10 million into the company and increasing their stake from 10% to 15%. I think it really fur further validates um, the strength of our project. You know, this is a project that a miner who you know is is mining silver one of the best silver miners on the planet is saying you've got something real and we want more of it mm. let me walk back you mentioned complications mining silver in mexico argentina what should be, people be aware of there sean well listen i think argentina's problems go beyond mining like you know you've got um you know a massive inflation issue right now where mm. you know almost on a on a you know, on a monthly basis, you've got like, you know, pensioners running out to, the, you know, banks to cash their checks because, you know, they're losing 10% purchasing power every check that they get. Yeah. And yeah. so that's a real issue. 
um, trying to get money out of the company, country. So for example, if Dolly Varden were to go and invest in a project there, and we wanted to then start mining and start distributing the, the, uh, the fruits of that to our shareholders, we'd have great difficulty getting money out of country. So that's a challenge. So you've got uh, hyperinflation, you've got some monetary challenges within the country, and that, if you look at other areas where you've had inflation, it has some negative uh, repercussions to society at large, right? And sure. we, we don't even have to get into all that. So Argentina is a problem, it's a, it's a mess. Um, and they're in the midst of an election right now. Mm. Uh, you go to Mexico, which is the silver capital on the planet, uh, the challenge with Mexico right now is the government is saying no more new open pit mines, mm -hmm. number one. Uh, and number two, you know, you've got, uh, you've got expensive mining taxes and it's just becoming more and more difficult to get projects going in Mexico. Uh, you, you know, there's, there's issues trying to secure um, water rights and uh, so Mexico has become a challenge. We're seeing that same challenge in both Peru and Chile. So it just makes Canada, a, you know, stronger and stronger and better jurisdiction. Right. Okay. You know, it's, I have a buddy in Buenos Aires. He's a money manager down there and he sends me screenshots of the inflation number on like a weekly basis, right? Yeah. And 10% inflation, you're talking month over month, not annually. It's bananas how that's managed. That's correct. You yeah. know, try to manage cash in that environment, right? This guy's got, he's put to task. Okay, so let's talk about the proje project a little bit. You're in the Golden Triangle in British Columbia. What did Eric Sprott see? What did Rick Rule see? Um, you know, what's Hecla looking at? Why are these players so excited about what you have? I'm smiling because it's um, because I see it too. I think I was new to the story. Um, I first became aware of it when the company listed its shares in 2012, but I saw the company kind of just limp along for eight years. Okay. And I took it over because I have got a team of scientists that have done really well in the Golden Triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my partners is Rob McLeod, who is mm -hmm. from Stewart, BC, yeah. third generation miner. Um, you know, the Bruce Jack project, which is one of the great projects up there, was acquired for almost $3 billion a few years ago by Newcrest. That's a project that's named after family members of his, you know, a, a cousin and an uncle. And so, you know, the rich mining history um, of the area my, the geologists, the scientists, the, you know, the explorers in my office have worked on all the projects up there and they understand the rocks, they understand the post-mineralization um, folding and all the faulting. And so I took a team of experts and we tasked them with going after and growing, which was the richest silver mine in the British Empire, the old historic Dolly Varden silver mine. Uh, you look at another mine that we have on the property, the Torbert mine, it was Canada's third largest producing silver mine when it was in operation. So we had this great history. Mm -hmm. And if we, if I could bring the capital, and when I close this uh, deal today with Hecla, which I'll be closing in the next couple of days, it will have marked $75 million of new capital that I've brought into this company since I took over three years ago. So I've brought in hmm. a significant amount of capital. We've put it to work in a disciplined manner and the capital's come from Hecla, it's come from Eric, it's come from institutions like the one you mentioned um, and, and other astute investors. So you've got enough capital, you've got the right explorers, and you've got this highly <coughs> prospective area. And then beyond that, we've also done some regional consolidation to bring in the homestake asset, yep. to, to increase resources. And, and then we got lucky. We made a discovery. We found silver underneath a sedimentary cap, um, and we found that the same host rock persisted, and that's taken one of our deposits from, you know, it's small discrete discovery to, we've got 950 meters of strike length there. Okay. And we're growing, you know, the last results were 30 meters of almost 400 grams of silver. I've got some more results that'll be coming. We've got actually a lot of results, 40,000 meters of results to report. So we're with this new cash injection from Hecla, mm -hmm. um, we're well positioned to continue to make discoveries and continue to advance this project. So 40,000 meters still to be reported. Yeah. And if I'm correct, 6 million of the 10 million from Hecla will go direct to exploration. A minimum. A minimum. Okay. Yeah. And so what can prospective shareholders look forward to in terms of timing and news flow? What are you looking forward to, Sean, in terms of news flow? 
Look, I'm looking forward to silver ounces in the ground being re-rated higher. Like when I yeah. took over Dolly Varden, the ounces that we had were valued at about 40 cents an ounce in the ground. Today, they're closer to a dollar. But I know in a bull market, they'll trade at three, four, five dollars. And I think the, that's previous bull markets. Like what are future bull markets going to bring us? Sure. Yeah. Well, so I look forward to the revaluation of those ounces. I look forward to finding more ounces. And so it's really just a story of, you know, I've always seen Dolly as a bank, right? And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we've got a cash balance that I've brought 75 million into. Uh, we've, we've leveraged that into making discoveries because I think, you know, our discovery cost per ounce at a time where these ounces on an in situ value are here and they're going here. The, the, the simple answer is, how many ounces are we going to get to when we start getting valued at four or five, six dollars an ounce in the ground? Sure. You know, and right now we've got in all categories about 140 million ounces of silver equivalent. Can we get to 200? Can we get to 300? Is there a billion ounce project? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the questions that we're trying to answer. Trying to answer right yeah. now. Okay. And then in terms of so cash balance post this 10 million from Hecla, what are you guys sitting on today, Sean? Um, we're, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about five million dollars today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then adding this 10 adding million. Adding this 10 million to it. Yeah. Outside of of. And and Hecla, we talked in the news release today about um, 15 million dollars in a future financing. Yes. And um, you know it wouldn't surprise me if Hecla took a lead on that issue as well. So what is what is the terms of that fifteen million in future financing, and are there any terms with with yeah. Hecla's current ten million? So the terms on this one are essentially very close to market. You know, we we're trading at seventy cents on Friday. We we announced a deal today at sixty five cents. Mm -hmm. um, there are no broker warrants. There's no mm -hmm. commissions we're paying. It's so important to know. It's yeah. very important that we are walking away net net with ten million dollars. Yeah. And um, we've put a floor in the next financing. We're That's not going right. to raise money below 65 cents. So we're showing our shareholders a commitment to limiting dilution. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got no ceiling, so we could raise, um, you know, as high as we want. But we are putting a floor in. And um, and I, again, I think it's going to be results driven um, in terms of what Hecla decides to do going forward. But it, I think it's a good sign in, at a time where it's very very hard to raise capital. And if you look at the deals that other companies are putting up, they're coming with warrants, they're coming with deep discounts, they're coming yeah. at, you know, like it is a brutal environment, uh, one that people would say they've never seen one this bad. And for us to go reach out to a strategic investor and get this capital, have the catalyst coming, and again, judge us on what we've done. We've taken this little <clears throat> company, we've made it relevant through capital, through good people, through discoveries, through acquisitions. We're going to continue doing those things going forward. You know, I, I tell my audience all the time, Sean, the most important resource for a junior mining company aren't the rocks, it's cash, right? And if you can raise cash in today's market. I thought you were going to say it's people. <laughs> <laughs> that's second. That's maybe number two. Well, let's, that's a good segue. Let's, let's touch on that. I want you to share some highlights from your team. Yeah. Um, yeah, you take well, it listen, I, I just think from the board level, like we're, we're surrounded by, you know, I could list off companies like Newmont or Coor or Hecla, or, but really it's, they're not the ones that wake up every morning that are banging the rocks, sure. right? Or banging Bay Street or, yep. you know, so it's, it's really the, the people you never hear about. It's, it's mm. Joaquin Marias, who's at site trying to fit, find the next deposit. It's Andrew Hamilton, who's a senior resource geologist, who is working on, you know, the, the definition drill program, converting ounces and expanding and extending them. It's those type of people at project level that make all the difference. It's Diana Zopa, mm -hmm. right, who is on, on, the, on the communications side, who is going out and, and talking and communicating with investors. It's those people that make this company special. I love that. And then outside of your institution holding, I think last I checked, it was like 7% was retail held. Is that close? Yeah, it's, you know, it probably fluctuates because again, the institutions are hard to track. So we, yeah. we, it, we approximately, they're at 50% institutionally held. Okay. And you mentioned, uh, you know, Fidelity at 7.5% of the whole company. Yeah. And we've got some other big media institutions. So half the stock is held by institutions, 23% by Fury. 
through the divestment Fury of home stake. Yeah. So that takes us to almost 75%. You've got Eric at 10%. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heckless going now from 10 to 15. That's right. Um, but yeah, the, the retail position is somewhere between 7 and 10%. That's a tight structure. Yeah. It is. Anything else you want to share with my audience today, Sean? Um, you know, I, I just think that moving forward, having a project where the community wants it, like we've got a relationship with mm. our First Nations partners and all the surrounding communities that are saying, we want the jobs, this is something that's important to us. That's the most important part of the equation. Second are the rocks. You know, we've got something that is exceptionally high grade and not just high grade, but like I've looked at a hundred projects because think about this, we're at a time right now in the world where these projects are at an extremely depressed value. Mm -hmm. So I would love nothing other than to be like the old silver standard and pick up projects and, and build a monster silver company with 5 billion ounces in resources. But when I look around the world and I've looked at a hundred projects, I can't find something that I, hand over heart, think is really mineable. Okay. And we're not just interested in bringing ounces in inventory. We want to bring mineable ounces. So out of the 100 projects I've looked at, the one I pulled the trigger on to acquire was five kilometers away, mm-hmm. which was Homestake. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think the real differentiator here is we've got these wide intercepts, you know, 20, 30 meters. 300, 400 grams of silver. That's what makes us special. So we've got the certainty, we've got the right project, we've got the right people, we've got the right capital. And I, if I were to say, where is this story going? I think it inevitably gets taken over. I love that. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. It's been a great chat. Th- with thanks you. for having me. This is Jay Martin.